Texas Congressman Ronnie Jackson, I want to start topical. Joe Biden announced his re-election last week for the 2024 presidential election. What do you make of that? Well, I think it's a shame. You know, I don't think he's qualified to be our president right now, to be honest with you. I've been calling for a while now for his uh, for him to leave, to resign, or to move on. I don't think he's cognitively fit to be our president. I think that he's got all kinds of issues. I don't know exactly what his issues are. I've, I've said all along, I'm not speaking as, you know, I am a physician. And by the way, a physician that took care of three presidents. I took care of President Bush, President Obama, and President Trump. So I'm really familiar with what it takes, both physically and cognitively, to do the job of commander in chief and head of state in the U.S. government. I, I've worked side by side with him for, for, for decades. And uh, this, he doesn't have what it takes. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but he's got some issues related to his age, uh, some cognitive decline. Uh, he's confused most of the time. He doesn't know where he's at, what he's doing. He slurs his speech. He shuffles when he walks. Uh, he's just, uh, it doesn't inspire confidence in our, in our allies. Our allies don't, they don't uh, respect us and, and uh, trust us anymore. And our adversaries don't respect us or fear us anymore. And that's just a, a recipe for disaster here in the United States. And so I, uh, I'm encouraging them. I've written a letter that will be coming out next week that will be signed by many members of Congress requesting him to reconsider his, uh, you know, his, his efforts to run for office again for a second term and uh, or to submit to objective cognitive testing, uh, much the way that President Trump did. President Trump had a cognitive test uh, because the far left and the liberal press here in the United States were uh, up in arms demanding that he have a not only a physical exam, but a but a cognitive assessment of some sort. And I was his physician at the time. We did that. He passed it with flying colors. And I think that if anyone needs that same test now, it's Joe Biden. I want to get into why you originally wrote that letter, because you wrote your first letter not long into his presidency. I think it was June 2021. What Walk me through why you did that so early into, into the administration. What kind of prompted you? Well, I was talking about it actually before I even was elected to Congress. When I was running for office the year before I was elected four years ago, when he was running for office, when he was candidate Joe Biden, I was talking about it then. And I was just astonished that this man would get in front of the camera and he would make such, you know, uh, just missteps, like, you know, just completely confused and didn't know what was going on. And I was astonished that the press didn't say anything about it. They just covered it up. They didn't really, they didn't make a big deal out of it at all. And having been President Trump's position, uh, during his during his presidency, and in seeing the scrutiny uh, that the, 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 the press applied to President Trump regarding you know any type of little uh, misstep at all, President Trump did nothing nothing to for the press to to demand that he had any type of you know mental or cognitive testing. They didn't like his style. They didn't like his attitude. They didn't like his tweet. Yet they 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 tried to make it uh, an issue uh, regarding his cognitive abilities and his mental abilities. So we did this test. So I thought there was just an unbelievable double standard. And having been President Trump's physician, I think I saw that uh, earlier than a lot of folks did. And so I, I just immediately said, you know, look, the, the standard needs to be the same. President Trump submitted to the test. Joe Biden needs to submit to the test because I really think that something's going on here. And it's only gotten worse. It hasn't gotten better. It's just continued to get worse over the last two years. And so this letter that's coming out next week will be the fourth letter that I've written, uh, signed by multiple members of Congress to President Biden directly, to his physician and to his, uh, to his administration in general, uh, demanding that he have some type of cognitive assessment or that he he move on, that he step down and he let somebody who's who's capable of doing the job do the job. Congressman, have you ever heard anything from the White House for the first three letters that you've written? No, I haven't heard a word, you know, and it's just been a shame. We had a recent, he's had two physical exams done since he's been at the White House. They've both just been uh, an effort to just check the box and move on. His position has not been honest with the American people. They've talked about stuff that we don't care about, little uh, little issues uh, that they brought up with his gait and uh, you know things of that nature. And 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 uh, he they they haven't addressed the real issues that we care about. We care about his actual physical health, but we also care more importantly at this particular point about his cognitive ability to do the job. I mean, it's, it's a dangerous situation with everything that's going on in the world right now with China mm. and Russia and Iran and North Korea. Um, it's, it, we, we need a leader. We need a commander in chief in our country who's going to keep us out of a war, not get us into one. And I'm really afraid that Joe Biden is going to get us into a war because he's completely incompetent, not only on the domestic stage. You can see what's happening in our country domestically with our economy and with crime and with our southern border and all these other issues. 
but internationally, he's, he, he's, he's, a, he's providing a real dilemma and a real problem for our allies and a real opportunity for our adversaries. So you haven't heard anything from the White House and obviously Dr Kevin O'Connor has, um, you know, he said he's physically fit but there's been no actual mental exam. And then you wrote in your memoir that when you did start expressing these concerns publicly, your former boss, Barack Obama, kind of sent you a scathing email to say that he was disappointed in you. What do you think this says about the state of the Democratic Party if they're kind of protecting the president? Well, I just think that, you know, they're, they're consumed with the power that they have. I, I think that the big problem is all the people that are surrounding Joe Biden, whether it's Jill Biden, who wanted to be first lady more than she wanted her next breath, or whether it's uh, Susan Rice or Ron Klain when he was the chief of staff early on, uh, all of these people that are surrounding him in the West Wing, in the White House, their power, their authority, and, and, and their ability to, to control a large part of, of this country it derives from their association with him and his uh, position as president of the United States. So I think there's a lot of people, a lot of the establishment Democrats in Washington, D.C., that want Joe Biden to stay in place because he provides them the power and the authority that they currently have. When he leaves, that evaporates and it goes to someone else. And uh, I think that President Obama, you know, uh, has, had, you know, he, Susan Rice just recently, a few days ago, uh, she was the domestic policy uh, advisor in the White House. And she was a national security advisor for President Obama. She just recently left, but she's not the only one. There are a lot of former Obama officials that were mid-level staffers that are now senior staffers in the west wing of the biden white house and so i think that there's a big push not only from uh you know from uh, people that worked for obama but people that that are all uh, that are part of the establishment in washington dc now that really want him to stay in power and i think that's a big part of the problem i think that's where a lot of the cover-up lies and i think that uh, for whatever reason uh, the Democrats have always had a con had, had complete control over the, the press in this country, especially the mainstream media and the social media. And uh, when I say mainstream, I mean, it, it, in my mind, it's the, it's the, it's the left. But uh, they've had control of the mainstream media and the social media in this country for a very long time. And I think that they're uh, more than happy to help cover up uh, Biden's incompetency. Congressman, if you're about to send your fourth letter, does it kind of feel like you're banging your head against the wall, asking for the same thing over and over again and not hearing anything back? Absolutely, it does, you know, but I will tell you that uh, I think, uh, Maddie, I think there's going to come a, a time where the Democrats are going to have to address this, no matter how badly they don't want to. He's continuing to get worse. And at some point, they're going to have to deal with the fact that he's completely incompetent and, uh, and not just everyone in this country, but the whole world knows it. And I think that they will they will have to uh, to do something. Mm -hmm. and I think that people will look back and, and they'll say that, you know, well, look, uh, there's been members of Congress that have been asking for this for, for a long time. Uh, and, you know, former physician to three presidents who's been talking about it since before he was even elected. And uh, so I'm not going to give up. I'm going to stay after it because I think that uh, there will be a day that comes in the near future where this becomes relevant. Do you think he would pass the exam? <laughs> I don't think he I don't think he would uh, come anywhere close to passing any type of cognitive assessment. I think that that's why they don't do it. I think that they know that he would fail miserably uh, and that, that's why they're, they're refusing to do this. I want to go back to what you were saying before about uh, Donald Trump being told that he should sit a cognitive exam in 2018. He obviously copped a lot of backlash when he would front the media. Mind you, he at least has that over Joe Biden, always fronting the media. How do you compare the pair between Joe Biden and Donald Trump and that situation of that, you know, b bias, if you will? Well, you know... You know, Joe Biden says all the time, every time he gets asked about this, which is very infrequently that he gets asked about it by the press, but the few times he's been asked about his cognitive performance or, his, whether, or whether he's getting too old, you know, implying that he has cognitive issues, he said every time, he said, watch me. He said, watch. We are watching him, and, and, and it's terrifying to watch him. You know, it's terrifying to people in this country to watch him. But I would say the opposite is true of President Trump. President Trump every day gets up in front of the press and, you know, and, and he, you know, he, when he was president, and he would just walk in and continues to do so even today. Uh, he, he doesn't shy away from the press at all. He will just spontaneously go out unscripted, and he will talk to the press for as long as they want to talk to him. He will get up and do rallies, and he'll stand in front of the, he'll stand up at the, at the podium in front of hundreds of thousands of people, and he will talk for hours on end. And, and most of it's just completely unscripted. 
And, and Joe Biden can't do that. Joe Biden can't get up and read from a teleprompter for even a few minutes without uh, without it really looking uh, like he's struggling to get through it. And he certainly can't ask uh, or can't answer unscripted questions from the press. You saw recently that one of the latest stories that was in, in, in the press here was that, you know, uh, he, they're, they're literally giving him the exact questions mm. that they're going to ask. They give him note cards to walk up to the podium with, tell him what reporter to call on, and they tell him the exact question that he's going to be asked and what the exact answer he's supposed to provide. And and that's just, that, that that's a failure from the press. I mean, that's a complete failure uh, on the side of, of the American press, but but it's also, it, it's just, it, it tells us every day that this man can't do the job. But there's a big difference between the enthusiasm, between the energy level, between the cognitive abilities. I'll tell you that President Trump, uh, you know, it's, it, this is not an age issue. Let me just clear that up with Joe Biden. This is a cognitive issue. Look at Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is a year older than Joe Biden. And even though I don't agree with anything Bernie Sanders says, Bernie Sanders is cognitively competent. You can understand what he says and he makes sense. And he, he's not lost or confused like Joe Biden is. Donald Trump is, is a few years younger than Joe Biden, but Donald Trump is sharp as a tack. His memory is incredible. And uh, so I just think that there's a very obvious uh, difference between the two here. But like you mentioned, uh, and like I was referring to earlier, there's a very uh, obvious double standard in the press as well in the way they treat these men. Congressman, you've obviously been a physician to three presidents, two Republicans, one Democrat, but now you're a Republican congressman. What would you say to anyone that might call your calls for Biden to sit a cognitive exam as political bias? Well, I just think that, you know, that, that's, it, it's just, look at, look at, I, I think that what I would say is that if you, if you think that, look at this man, go back and look at clips. He's always made gaps his entire career, but these are much different. He's very confused now. And I, I, I don't think you even have to be a former physician to three presidents. You don't even have to be a physician anymore to look at Joe Biden and understand that something's going on with him and that he's got an issue uh, that that's, makes him unfit to serve. And I think that people may say that, but I think deep down inside, even the people that are saying some of that, they know that I'm right. They know mm. that he's got an issue and they know that he shouldn't be serving as the president of the United States. And like I said, you do not have to be a physician at this point to figure that out. Ronnie Jackson, you've been a big vocal supporter of Donald Trump. Are you throwing his your weight behind him for 2024? Do you think there's one other single contender in the Republican Party that could do a better job? What about Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley, perhaps? There's nobody, there's nobody out there right now that can do a better job as president of the United States than Donald J. Trump. He did a fantastic job when he was president previously. I'll tell you that this man's motivated by the right reasons. He's got the, he's got, he's got the, he, he has the ability to do things that other, that other people won't do when they get into the office. Now they may talk about it. They may say they're going to do it. But the one thing that we need more in this country than anything else right now in the United States is we need somebody to go in and to, to drain the swamp. Now, he started doing that. That's why there's such a big backlash against him uh, from, from day one was because he did start draining the swamp. And that, that upset a lot of, a lot of establishment uh, politicians, not just Democrats, but establishment Republicans as well. And they came out of the woodwork. He was, he was draining the swamp, and they, they, they understand the swamp. They like the swamp. They thrive in the swamp. That's where they get their power and their authority from. And when this outsider came in and started draining the swamp, it turned everything upside down in D.C., He's coming back and he will be more motivated than ever to pick up where he left off and drain in the swamp. And we need it now worse than ever. We got you know, our entire federal government in, in, in certain areas is being weaponized against American people, against patriotic American people that support President Trump and support the conservative ideas that we have here in the country. And Donald Trump will defend that. He, I'm, I just, I will just honestly say that I think that he's the most prepared to be president again. And, and I, I'm 110% behind him. I'm working as hard as I can. Uh, to lead the fight here in the state of Texas to make sure that we get him reelected. But uh, he, he's, what, he's what this country needs. We need to make America great again, again. Congressman, do you agree with Nikki Haley's um, presidential promise to enforce competency tests for politicians over the age of 75? I mean, at this particular point, I don't think it's a bad idea when you're looking at what we're dealing with right now. I mean, we can't afford to have another president like Joe Biden ever. Uh, he's done incredible damage to this country in just a short period of time. So uh, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, that we've never done that before. The only president that's ever had a cognitive assessment uh, ever was Donald J. Trump. Uh, he's the only one that had the courage to, to, uh, to do it. And, 
you know, not that other presidents have previously been asked to do it, but, uh, you know, going forward here, I think that we, we need to look at that. Uh, certainly if we're going to have candidates that are a little bit older and, and looking at what uh, Joe Biden uh, has, has, has done to this country and we just, we just can't, we can't, we can't have it again. Congressman, just finally on that note of damage, I want to ask you about Title 42, which is set to end next week. And you're obviously in the state of Texas, which bears the brunt of a lot of the illegal immigrants passing through. How dire is this situation yes. and how detrimental do you think this will be for Joe Biden's re-election campaign? Well, I hope it's going to be the death blow to his presidential campaign. I mean, that may be the only good thing that comes from this if that happens, because it's an absolute disaster, not just here in Texas, but all over this country. You know, we were talking earlier before I came on air about where my district was and the fact that it was a little bit north of the border. It doesn't matter anymore. Every community in this country right now is essentially a border town because we've had so many people crossing our border illegally. We're in a situation now where we're having oh, well over 200,000 people on average every single month that cross our border illegally. And those are the ones that we know about. That doesn't account the gotaways that we see on camera that we don't even know who they are. They're, these are people that are trafficking drugs, that are trafficking young children, uh, sex trafficking. Uh, there's, there's, these are terrorists, potential ISIS terrorists. We've caught numerous people that are on the terror watch list crossing our border. Massive amounts of drugs, fentanyl, heroin, methamphetamine. It's destroying our country from the inside out. And Joe Biden has been facilitating that since the day he got here. And, you know, we're going to go back. We're, we have a bill coming out in Congress in the next week or two on the Republican side. We're pushing this bill through. We're going to reestablish the Republic, the Trump era border policies. We're going to build the wall again. We're going to go back to the remain in Mexico. We're going to reform our asylum system. Uh, we are going to re rebuild relationships with with the, these uh, Central and South American governments. And, you know, we've had people come across the border in the last uh in the last year from 120 different countries. They're not just coming from South America and Central America anymore. And some of these people are bad people that want to do this country harm, but we're going to fix all of this. The Republicans are going to push this forward and it'll be up to the Senate and Joe Biden to make the right call and to sign this bill and to secure our border. And, some, and somebody's got to do it soon because we're losing control. Congressman Ronnie Jackson, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Maddie. I appreciate it.